Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning this episode of Nick Egan Times. On this episode, we have two fantastic actors. We have Abe and George, who join us from the hit series The Chosen, with over 200 million viewers. The Chosen is a groundbreaking historical drama based on the life of Jesus, seen through the eyes of those who knew him. Set against the backdrop of Roman oppression in first century Israel, the seven season show shares an authentic and intimate look at Jesus' revolutionary life and teachings. The show is currently in its fourth season, which recently premiered, premiered exclusively in theatres. We're now joined by the actors who play Big James and John, commonly referred to as the Sons of Thunder. Welcome, Abe and George, and thanks for coming on the podcast. Hello. G'day, Nick. Thanks for having us, mate. I hope you don't mind me saying Nick, but I'll, just, I'll say Nicholas if you... Well, that's Greek, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, how's it all been going for you both? It's been good. It's been amazing to watch the journey of season four, uh, to be on the big screen, to see how all of these things are being received and play out. It's really, really an amazing time to be with this show. Incredible. All right, let's jump straight into it. Tell us, firstly, I want to know, I guess, personally, tell us about your backgrounds and I guess how it transpired to actually get into the series. Um. I'm I'm one of the lucky ones that has kind of, kind of been on the show since day one, you know, just purely because of sometimes with storylines, sometimes with, you know, casting decisions, uh, some actors have come later on. But I think the first four uh, disciples in the first four episodes, four or five, uh, I think we start with Thaddeus, Little James, um, Mary Magdalene, uh, not a disciple, but very close. Uh, and then we've also got Peter or Simon at the time, Andrew, James and John. So, they're the initial ones. And then Matthew was kind of watching. So you kind of, you know, get your kind of Nathaniel and your, uh, you know, Simon Z. So yeah, uh, there's some of us who have been on the show since like the start. And um, yeah, it's it's been amazing to see the show kind of grow from that kernel into what it is now. So uh, I, I often see that John is uh, referred to as almost the eagle as a, as a, as a testament writer. Uh, in that he oversees uh, as like a voyeur kind of oversees things how they're happening and I kind of feel like that as well as one of the actors uh, I was kind of John's role is quite small in the first season so I got to just sit back and watch the first season happen and then as John's role got a little bit more prominent uh, you know getting more involved uh, it's been just fascinating watching the show from the inside and also from the outside where we started not knowing how we were going to get this show uh, into people's hands. Literally, it's now on the biggest of screens. Uh, we're opening in, in cinemas all over the world. And um, yeah, it's been really special, honestly. Uh, it's uh, it's definitely become the, the best opportunity of, of my lifetime. Magnificent. Tell me, why, why do you think um, it resonates with so many people and you've got so much traction from viewers? Uh, it, it's truly remarkable, especially because it's crowdfunded. Um, yeah, it's, it's sensational. Abe, Abe, you said this really cool thing. I'll let you say it, but it's just that, that, that combination of the different audiences that might be interested in the show. You might, you might know the story, you might not know the story. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think our story has so much value. For some people, it has spiritual value. For some people, it has entertainment value. And for some people, it has historical value. Um, and so I think that we capitalize on all of these elements, as well as the fact that we have a show that deals with problems that people are actually dealing with in their real life, whether it's uh, neurodivergence, whether it's um, uh, behavioral or mental health issues, addiction issues, uh, coping with grief, the loss of a child. We really, in 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 his in his. Uh, honest way as possible, try and dive into the lesser known perspectives from a story that everybody knows. And I think that's why it keeps people coming back is how are they going to do it this time? We all know what happens, but how are they going to do it this season? Yeah, that's great insights. And are you both uh, religious and spiritual? You know, I think spirituality is one thing. And I think that there's a cultural component that happens where you're raised in your culture, right? And and that culture tends to have whatever the, the 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 your mother or your father's religion. But I think one thing that happened during the show is to actually experience these stories for yourself. Uh, you know, to actually put yourself in the shoes has a very different effect than just it being, oh, it's part of my culture. You know what I mean? So I, I could definitely say that uh, 
going deeper into the stories and then having to actually pretend like it's happening right now is definitely something that that has been uh, perspective and altering about being on this show. Right. And I think a lot of a lot of Greeks would uh would probably resonate with me with the uh you know do you go to church no do you go to Greek Easter yes <laughs> so <laughs> you know I know that yeah. I I I know uh I know this uh, the story of Jesus and and whatnot through growing up I went to a Greek Orthodox school uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say I was I was very religious or I am very religious but one thing that the show has definitely taught me is that um I think you can. You can listen to what Jesus says. And as the disciples, I don't think anyone has listened to Jesus's words, whether you're Christian or not, uh, you know, whatever background you come from. No one has listened to his words more than we have. And uh, there's so many parables that I have never read because I, I hadn't read the Bible before the show, you know, only kind of listened to it, you know, at like Greek church when I was a kid. So uh, hearing these parables over and over again, our audience has that ability if they switch on the show and they listen to it if they want to listen to the episode and watch the episode 40 times then they will get that experience but we actually get it 40 times because there's you know not 40 but maybe 20 takes of the same scene so we hear jonathan <laughs> kind of you know we, we, because it's from different angles and it's like can we get that again and now we're going to do john's coverage and so we have to get jo uh, jonathan off camera so peeking behind the curtain a bit we get to listen to these parables over and over again. And whether you're religious or not, uh, you kind of start to listen to these things. And, you know, there's parables about, you know, do you leave your master's side? And when is the kingdom of heaven coming? And, you know, uh, you kind of listen to it and you go, well, oh, maybe it means this. And there's actually a lovely parable about um, look to the flowers, how they do not toil and labor, which is like look to nature. And I'm just like, whoa, I... After hearing that like 20 times on set, you kind of, it's, it's, it, it is beautiful. And it's like, I think anybody who's watching the show can kind of learn from that. I think that's been going back to your original question of why is the show kind of so successful? I think it's for that reason, you've got so many audiences that can kind of, um, that can digest the, the messages in any way that they want. Yeah, definitely. And I really understand what you just said, Dan. I think that's really, really, really good insights here. Thanks for sharing. Um, how have your lives changed personally, or maybe even professionally, since you've been in the series? It's definitely a job, <laughs> you know, so I didn't have a job. <laughs> you know, so, so definitely professionally, like you, it's it, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's it's reductive to say, but we're, 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 it's kind of crazy because we say that so financially, like, yeah, it's, it's, it, as an actor, you don't always have work, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like work to us. So it's this really amazing experience where as an actor, you also want to be, you're in this, not for the financial side. Uh, you just want to sustain yourself and the show does sustain us, but creatively you want your work to make a difference. You want uh, people to resonate with what you're doing. That's what every actor wants. It doesn't matter if you're a Marvel superhero movie or, uh, you know, you're an independent film, you know, from Australia. E each time you want your artistic, uh, you know, presentation or production to make a difference or to resonate uh, narratively, let's just say. And so our show does that. So it, it's very fulfilling, not only professionally, but, you know, emotionally. And yeah, like I said, like, working with Abe all the time. Like it's not, it doesn't feel like a, a job. We're just, we kind of mess around on set as well, me and Abe. <laughs> it, and it, it all helps the the final product, I believe, especially how close George and I have gotten over these last few years. But I think also it's important that, um, you know, there's a, there's an old saying by some someone in the theater that uh, if you perform a show to 5,000 people, you'll affect 1000 and then you'll really change one person's life and and that's just kind of like the 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 big general schemata of it and so it's been amazing to see how how many people have actually reflected back to us personally that this has helped them or affected them in in some way i, I think you that that has a way of transforming you too as an actor on the show that's great um it's good to see that obviously you guys are besties <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> um <laughs> What what inspires you both daily? Daily? What inspires daily. us yeah, daily? Yeah, yeah. Um, go go on. Okay, I would say lately the the fact that we get to to be on this show 
and uh and that it's 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 impacting people is such a it's such a statement it's almost surreal it's surreal when somebody comes up to you in the airport and recognizes you or you're in the passport agency and there's literally a nun right next to you like my case and she recognizes you mm -hmm. and then you find yourself in these scenarios that are like is this a setup of a joke a chosen actor and a nun walk into the passport office <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? so it's it's really uh there's a lot of surreal moments and and that can't go uh, you know it, it can't be stated enough how that is a moment of gratitude and a moment of inspiration for me. Awesome. I, the, the, the thing with me as well is that um, I'll tell you what, like things that inspire me, uh, it can be related to the show, but I, we, we, we got asked what was your favorite memory from season four. And uh, I indirectly, I actually had to yeah, pull, you know, after the fact, because it was from our social media team, just say, was that okay for me to say? Because I felt disrespectful because I did not mention the show at all. <laughs> and so they said, what's your favorite memory from season four? And it was actually visiting a chosen fan in hospital. Uh, a fan of the show uh, was uh, was sick in hospital with cancer, 16 years old. And all of us, all of the disciples went and visited him in Utah in hospital. And uh, just seeing the, the smile on his face and seeing how much it touched him and his family, uh, it was inspirational. And uh, we, we got to become very good friends with Jared. Uh, that was his name. He unfortunately didn't uh, win his battle with cancer. But it was during during that time, there was actually, I kept in touch with him. We would message each other. He knew I was going to South Africa and I was actually in South Africa. And the last message he actually sent me b before he passed was, is there anything I can do for you? So you think about what inspires you. It's, uh, I would say, Jared. And, and, and people like Jared right now, because you think about the person who needs the most right now is, is, a, is a boy who's ill and dying and in a bed and he can't get out of the bed. And he says to me, is there anything I can do for you? I've still got that message. It's crazy. I'm like, what, 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 what? I, I was like, you're asking me. And I think there's a lot of those messages in our show as well. But um, that's kind of what I draw inspiration from. And you know what? Bringing it back to The Chosen, I was kind of silly to ask our social team, is this related to the show? Because it was indirectly. The fact that the most inspirational thing was this young fan. Uh, what brought us all together was The Chosen. And uh, to see how, you know, he has not only impacted us, but the rest of The Chosen family learned about Jared's story. And they were energized and strengthened by his uh, by his strength and his courage. And I think about it every day. If there's something that kind of, that I feel like is I can't deal with, I'm like, that boy was asking, can I serve you in what could seem like the most difficult circumstances? So it basically feels like I think anything is possible. Like he really did. He really did show that to me. Anything is possible at any moment. He can be of service uh, even in his, in, in, in that state of illness and, and pain. And so, you know, why should I, why should, nothing should be able to impact me essentially. That's a wonderful story, and thank you, thank you for sharing. I mean, it's incredible work, you know. Obviously, helping someone. So, yeah, I think that show mm. sort of um, represents is very representative of that too. Um, thank you both for coming on the podcast. I really, really appreciate it. It's incredible your work. You know, I love personally watching the series. Um, I think it's magnificent. As I said earlier, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. My pleasure. You're welcome.